Vaughn is National Newspaper Columnist Day, Tony. Cheers to us. What do you miss most about sports writing? I'm Tony Kornheiser. That's easy. The yachts and the private jets, right? Yeah, oh, sure. I mean, you know what? If somebody I mean, asks me right now what I am professionally, I st the response that's coming out of my mouth is yeah, I'm a columnist. Sports writer. Yeah, yeah, sports yeah no, writer. I get that. Uh, but. My memory plays tricks on me. You're saying that we didn't have yachts and private jets when we wrote columns? Oh, wow. Sure. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Sixers scrape by. Tanner Howe throws a Maddox. And Kendrick Perkins joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with the news that Miami's Jimmy Butler will miss tomorrow night's win-or-go-home play-in game against the Chicago Bulls due to a right MCL injury he suffered last night. The long-term prognosis is as yet unclear. Will Bond, you love Butler and you love I the do. Bulls who drummed I the do. Hawks last night. Where does this leave the Heat? Leaves them without their best player, their most important player. Uh, leaves them without a guy who can lead them in the playoffs past essentially anybody because he's done it. Gotten to the finals multiple times, conference finals obviously multiple times. It leaves them without their second-best defender after Bam out of bio. It leaves him without a guy who's all-court, just a creative, really smart player, and a guy who's fearless. He's just got guts. The fact that he finished last night's game is amazing, Tony, because after the, the fall, I thought, okay, there's no way Jimmy Butler can finish this. He's playing. He's, he's getting a fifth steal even after he's injured, and it leaves them yeah. in no position yep. to even I, – look, I thought the Bulls – the Bulls are a weird team. I thought they might beat Miami anyway. And now without Jimmy Butler, I don't see them getting past the Bulls tomorrow night. They, Miami had to go on a 15-1 run last year in the fourth quarter of a play-in game to beat the Bulls and get you know, into that main draw and make that run. I don't see that happening. And even if they do, can they beat Boston with Jimmy Butler at least early in that series, compromise? I know it's, it's just sad for me because I love Jimmy Butler, particularly this time of year. There is a yeah. playoff Jimmy, yeah. and it's a thrill to watch, and they don't have that. Yeah, so I'm going to echo much of what you said here. I'm going to say right off the top, what a warrior Jimmy Butler was last night. He did not shoot well. He was 5 of 18, but as you say, he made five different steals, and he played 40 minutes, which means he played 31 minutes on an injured leg, and you could yeah. see him wincing as he went up and down the court. That was very visible, so I tip my hat to him. Can uh, Miami beat Chicago without him? Sure. I mean, you know, yeah. come on. Yeah. Chicago's not a particularly good team. They're a 39-43 and 43 team. They're not going to get 42 points from Kobe White again because they never got 42 points from him before. <laughs> right. That was, right. was a one-shot deal. So, yeah, and, and by the way, even without Jimmy Butler, Miami is better than the Hawks. So Miami can win this game, but they can't win. That's it, better okay? Than, well, yeah. Because the what Bulls. is waiting are the Celtics. Now, if the Bulls win, they will be swept by the Celtics, El Sweepo. Yeah. And if, if if Miami wins, maybe they get one game, but they will likely be swept, too, because there's a revenge factor, Mike. Last year, it was Miami that got rid of Boston in, yeah. in the playoffs, yeah. right? And that was mostly because of Jimmy Butler. So yes. if he's not going to play, do the math. They can't win. I know, Tony. I was so looking forward. As much a Bulls fan as I am, my entire life, I was seven years old when the franchise came into existence. All my life, I follow and cheer for the Bulls. But, man, a, a, a Jimmy Butler Miami versus Boston series would have been irresistible again. And we're not going to – I mean, I don't think we're going to see it because even if we see the series, I don't know how much Jimmy Butler, if any, we get. It's just a downer. It's a bummer. So we're going to move to the Sixers. They were down 12 to the Heat at halftime with Joel Embiid struggling. But Philly's big man bounced back with 11 in the fourth. And Nicholas Batum added 20 points. I think he had five threes. And a key block shot on a Six. Tyler Hero three attempt. And the Sixers won by a single point, and now they face your yeah. Knicks. Tony, do you come away yeah. from last night's game more or less confident in what you saw from the Sixers? I come away less confident, and I say that do knowing you? that I saw Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter, as you say, get 11, not just get 11. 
make two great interior passes, and get a couple of offensive rebounds. He's the reason they won that game, him and the fact yep. that Batum, who actually had six threes, played out of his mind. And I understand it's very dangerous to go against Philadelphia when Embiid is on the court, because when he's on, on the court, I think they're 32-8, and eight. okay? But I watched the game, Mike. He can't move laterally. He, he, no. he just cannot do it. And it's yeah. important to be able to do that. I actually thought the, the key play of the game was going to be when Jimmy Butler stole the ball off his dribble and went down the other end basically laughing. I did not think, I did not think Philadelphia would win that game. Now, look, I'm no great fan of the Knicks, as you know, but I think you have to look at Embiid and, and how he struggled last night moving. And when they isolated on him in timeouts, how exhausted he seemed. And you yeah. have to wonder, can he play all the games in this series? I'm not sure he can. Tony, all that's fair, and particularly when you talk about playing against a Tom Thibodeau defense, which is going to bump him. They're going to move him. They got some size back, you know, down low. Down there. And B wasn't even near the basket because he has no power. His, he can, his legs can't generate that yet. And they hit those threes, as you mentioned. Those are huge threes and the passes that he made. Look, he's been a warrior, too. Did you, you said, let me give you some credit because I know he's not your favorite player, but you said yesterday – you like that this matters to him. And I agree right. with that, Tony. That's it right. It really matters to Embiid that he can go as far as he can in these playoffs, at least get to the conference finals, which he hasn't been. But, Tony, like you, I'm looking at that New York defense and the physicality, the personality they play with, and I'm thinking, wow, can, can Joel do this? And now he's going to get more help from Maxie, who did not have a great game. Last night, and I, I think that they're going to be able to pitch in around him, Tony. And I'm still interested to see it, but I don't know how much he has physically for them. Mike, let me just say this. The Knicks have some really good shooters, and Embiid's not going to be able to close out. He can't move laterally. He just can't. Let's move to baseball, where last night's Red Sox starter, Tanner Howe, threw a Maddox. That's a complete game shutout in under 100 pitches. How threw 94 pitches against Cleveland, 69 of them for strikes. The game took one hour and 49 minutes. That's the fastest game in the last 14 years. And that game was Armando Galarraga's near perfecto that was undone by a bad call by umpire Jim Joyce. Wilbon, what is the word for Houck's performance last night? Throwback, Tony. And I, I, you know, I'm NBA playoff obsessed last night here in L.A. in our studios, but I peeked in on this. And... For me, a kid who grew up pitching, a starting pitcher for whatever that mattered as a, as a teenager in high school and, and summer games, I, I love starting pitching. I, I study it. To me, it's an art form. It's a, a forgotten art, if you will, in baseball. And I know some people talk about getting it back in. But, Tony, it's, I love what he said about people being obsessed with velocity, velo as he called it. But when he's from 91 to 95 miles per hour shaping pitches, getting movement, that's what pitching is. That's what pitching was. As great as guys like Gibson and Ferguson Jenkins and Seaver and Carlton and all that generation, they pitched. It was art. It wasn't just velo, throw out my elbow like these dopes want pitchers to do today. So I applaud Tanner Houck. I applaud him and the efforts and his common sense yeah. approach to this. And I hope there's more, but there won't be. Unlikely. Well, uh, the word that I would use is thanks. Because he took the ball, he went out to the mound, he did his job and he did it quickly and everybody could get home and have a snack. I mean, <laughs> this is not a likely guy to do it, Mike. He's bounced around between the bullpen and starting for the Red Sox for five years. He's 18 and 20 in his career. He had never gotten past the seventh inning before, but this year no Red Sox starter had even gotten to the seventh inning, which is why at Fenway they gave him a standing ovation last night when he went out to the ninth. This is the way yeah. baseball is supposed to be. And let me give credit to the manager Amen. of Boston. To Alex Cora, who had no yep. intention of putting a closer out there in the ninth. He was going to let Hauk pitch, and he pitched. And I'm going to say one more thing here about Greg Maddox. He didn't pitch in the 50s, Mike. It's not from a bygone era. He was no. into the 2000s. He retired yep. in 2008. So this can be done now. It can, can be Let's done. Let's take a break. Amen. Applause. Coming up, we will ask Kendrick Perkins about Jimmy Butler's knee injury. We'll also ask him whether he expects the Lakers to give the champs the Nuggets a series. Tony, what's more devalued, You're, starting pitching or running backs? Which one has been You're going to understand more? what I'm saying, Mike. 
He didn't go out there and throw. He pitched. Pitched. There's a difference. Yeah. All right, let's get back into the NBA play-ins with our great friend from NBA Today, Mr. Kendrick Perkins. The first question is sort of personal for you. It's about Jimmy Butler's MCL injury. You have had something similar to this. Can you tell us how that physically affects you when you try to play? When you talk about that MCL, I don't know if it's a strain or if it's a tear, but either or, it affects your lateral movement. And for Jimmy to finish that game, that just speaks volumes to what type of warrior and dog he has in the mental toughness. Now, we'll take it a step further a little bit. This is the time for the Milwaukee, I mean, for the Miami Heat to get a fair assessment on who they have surrounded by Jimmy, right? It's time to get right or get left. When you're talking about Tyler Hero, when you talk about Bam out of bio, can they elevate their game in a single game play-in tournament game to get them to the postseason? That's something that needs to be seen from the front office. When we talk about Pat Riley and Alonzo Mourning, they need to see what these guys are capable of doing because if they get sent home, which I believe they will, they're gonna have some they go definitely have some moves that they gotta make this offseason. Perk, the Sixers, of course, won that game. They go on now to face the Knicks. Um, I know you have watched Joel Embiid very closely throughout this season. Perk, from what you saw last night from Philly, do you give them a little chance, no chance, a lot of chance? Where? How do you like the Sixers now against <laughs> the Knicks? Well, Bon, I got the Knicks in six, okay? I got them in six. I'm not going to disrespect Philly and say that they're going to lose in five or four. Do I think Joel Embiid could have one or two games where he dominate? Absolutely, because he's so good at the mid-range, and he's also so good at getting to the free throw line. But when it comes to him getting up and down the floor and his lateral movement, everybody in the world saw it last night. It's not there, and it's expected, right? He's, he's 280 pounds, a seven-footer. It's not going to be there. And when I think about the tenacity and the dribble handoffs and the pick and rolls, that he's going to have to guard, including when he's guarding big body Bronson, is going to be a problem. When I think about OG Ananobi and how versatile he is as the defender, we're going to see OG on uh, Joel Embiid at times matched up on the perimeter. A Tom Thibodeau defense is going to make it hard for the Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid. I got the Knicks in six. Yeah, he's going to face some physicality from the Knicks perk. We, we, we got to talk about the defending champs and the Lakers, which is a particularly glamorous series. I seem to be one of the few people who I'm not picking the Lakers, but I think the Lakers can make this a real series and take Denver deep and they're not going to get swept like last year. You think I'm crazy? Do you think Denver is still that much superior to the Lakers at this point? Will Bond, if you if that if they consider you crazy, then damn it, they go consider me crazy as well. Because Good this is hear. this is definitely going to be a series, and the Lakers are going to make this interesting. When was the last time LeBron James had zero expectations and zero pressure going into a series? Never, never. The month of never where it's never been a time he's went into a series with no expectation. This is the time right here. So when I think about how the Lakers been playing, we look at how Rui has fit in right in that starting five, giving them that size, that shooting ability, that, you know, that length that they need. Anthony Davis, right, he's elevated his game. He's been outstanding all season long. D'Angelo Russell, he's knocking down shots. They just got back Gabe Vincent. This series is going to go deep. I feel like the Denver Nuggets are going to take it in six, possibly seven, but LeBron James, with a little bit of fuel added to him, a little bit of tension he has with Mike Malone, it's going to get interesting. I will get you out of here on this. Zion is out against Sacramento. Do you think that the Pelicans have enough without him to beat Sacramento and get into the main draw? They do. They do. But it's, it's, it's going to come down to, you know, Brandon Ingram. What is up with Brandon Ingram? I know he's just coming back off an of injury, but he got benched the other night in the fourth quarter. He got benched. I mean, w Willie Green did not even look his direction. Is big Jonas uh, Balatunas, is he going to step up to the plate? They're going to need great minutes out of him. What is C.J. McCullen going to do? He's the veteran leader on that team. He played well 
you know, towards the end of the season, I think averaging 30 plus, can he elevate his game? It's going to be a fun game, but New Orleans is, is at home. They have the size and athleticism at the wing position. When we're talking about the kid Murphy and Herb Jones to put on De'Aaron Fox, I don't know if Keegan Murray is going to have another game like he had against the Golden State Warriors because we do know that role players play better at home. I'm giving a slight edge to the New Orleans Pelicans to make sure that they handle their business at the crib without Zion Williams. Wow. I, that surprises me. Thank like you, Perk. Perk. Thank you. Perk, see you in another day or so. <laughs> see you soon. All right, my brothers. Thank you all. Let's take one last break, but still to come, Aaron Judge breaks his slump. And Iowa tries to make up for the loss of Caitlin Clark. Good luck with that. I always hope that when people say, oh, it's going to be a long series, six or seven, I always hope for a sweep. Because you're not actually picking the underdog team to win. You're just saying they're going to be credible well, over the long is haul. A big so I hope they between. get Happy time, people. Happy 86th birthday, Richie Pettibone. This one is near and dear oh. to us. We'll find you were just a tyke when Pettibone was an all-pro safety on the Chicago Bears who won yep. the NFL championship in 1963. But our greatest exposure to Pettibone was when he was defensive coordinator under Joe Gibbs on the Washington football team that won three Super Bowls. We can swear the defense always gave up fewer points in the second half because of Pettibone's halftime adjustments. Pettibone called everyone babe as in, how you doing, babe? babe. He had babe. one Hall of Fame defender in Darryl Green. The rest were just willing guys that he coached up. When Gibbs left after 1992, Pettibone got a shot as head coach. He went 4-12, and got fired, never coached again. And we still love you, babe. Tony, Richie Pettibone saved the Bears at championship game in 63 against the Giants and Wyatt Tittle. Intercepted Tittle in the end zone with 10 seconds to go to preserve the Bears championship. It's about my first Bears memory because I was five. But I can see Pettibone intercepting that pass in the end zone. Wrigley Field, baby. Wrigley Field. Happy anniversary, Mike Schmidt. On this day, 37 years ago, the Phillies third baseman hit his, a three-time MVP, a 10-time gold glove, a 12-time All-Star. He was on the 1980 Phillies who won the World Series, a team with Pete Rose. You know what they said about Maddox? Two-thirds of the earth is covered by water, the other third by Gary Maddox. Such a great line. Tony, Mike Smith's the greatest third baseman of all time, and there's no argument. And then George Brett, no. Brooks <laughs> Robinson, great fielder, Ron Sano, my no. hero, Mike no. Schmidt. No. And by the no. way, he's a, no. he's a seafaring man now. I saw him at Martha's Vineyard. He's, he, he's a captain of his own vessel, Mike Schmidt. Really? How about that? Wow. Isn't that great? Wow. Happy trails to Austin Matthews' quest for 70 goals. Matthews had 12 shots on goal last night in Toronto's last game of the season. All were stopped by Tampa Bay's goalie, Matt Tompkins. Another hit the crossbar in the second period. Quote, I wanted it for sure, ah. Matthews said, but it just wasn't meant to be. Matthews was trying to become the ninth NHL player ever to score 70 goals in a single season. He had to settle for 69. Meanwhile, in the same game, Tampa's Nikita Kucherov became the fifth player ever to get 100 assists in one season. Kucherov became the second player this week to do that. Connor McDavid did it on Monday. Previously, only Gretzky, Lemieux, and Orr had 100 assists in one season. Tony, I hate that Matthews didn't get that 70th goal. I mean, I hope this is not some sort of foreshadowing for Toronto, which has turned into the Cubs and Red Sox. They just cannot win. They had this disappointment with Matthews not getting the 70, but they, that can be all wiped away. If Toronto can make a run, at least get to the Stanley Cup final. Come on now. Come on, Maple Leafs. Now, let's go to the big finish. Nelly Ford is on the course, going for her fifth straight win in the first round of the Chevron Championship Major. You love Nelly Corda, your thoughts. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I am rooting for her. People, to use, people throw around historic all the time when stuff ain't historic. This would be because she put herself in incredible company if she wins again. Aaron Judge had a game-winning two-run single for the Yanks. Is that significant? Yeah, I think he was 0 for 12 at some point with seven strikeouts. He's their offense, him and Soto. Yeah. He's got to get started, right? Lucy Olsen is transferring from Villanova to Iowa. Do you find that significant? She's a great scorer, but do you want to try and replace Caitlin Clark in Iowa? Really? 
I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Big shoes. New shoes, Nike shoes, expensive shoes. Reliever Pete Fairbanks blew a game for the Rays and called his performance an all-encompassing type of suck. Your reaction? It's a pretty good line. George Solomon would never have let me use it. Last one, <laughs> last night of the NHL regular season. Are you intrigued? No, I mean, the Kings are playing Connor Bedard, the Blackhawks, 50 feet from me, but I'm not going to go. Austin Matthews, that was the last night for me last night. He didn't get that goal, so I'm sort of bummed. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Tony, Caitlin Clark's going to get a lot of those shoes. I'm going to buy those shoes. I'm going to stand in the line and get Caitlin Clark shoes. Here's sports.